Welcome to episode 69 of SpaceX in the News. I'm Kevin, and today we're gonna to be going over some up-to-date updates on Starship and its facilities. We'll talk SpaceX boats and the current status of CRS-19, what's new with Crew Dragon and Starlink, then we'll finish with future missions and today's honorable mention. Lewis from Lab Padre last weekend texted me some pretty sweet drone footage he took down in Boca Chica, Texas, and somehow he managed to wake up earlier than I would ever consider doing for you guys, and watched as SpaceX's ship, Go Discovery, brought in some Starship hardware from Cocoa, Florida. You can see a tank bulkhead, two stands, and eight rolls of stainless steel on board, all of which were immediately delivered to the Boca Chica site and filmed by another good friend of mine, Maria Pointer. These items will be used for the construction of the Mark III Starship and perhaps beyond. In fact, Mark III has already begun ring development, and Mark I is about completely disassembled now to make way for the new vehicle. On the East Coast, the big news concerns Starship's new launch pad located at 39A. A towering structure that will soon allow Starship to rest upon it is currently being stacked. This pad will support the even-numbered Starship prototypes in the future. For Falcon Heavy's maiden flight, the first test payload was of course a Tesla Roadster, so that begs the question what's going to be the test payload for the first Starship launch? Well, how about a Tesla Cybertruck? Elon tweeted that Starship definitely has the payload capacity for it. You know, it makes me wonder how much that truck would go for on the open market once it returns. I mean, that might be the most surefire way to pick up chicks. Hey, ladies, you want to get my truck? It's been to space. <laughs> You're creepy and crazy. Get out of my face. But what would you guys like to see as his first test payload? How about a Tesla Semi towing a Cybertruck? All right, so Elon was spotted the other night driving a Cybertruck around town. He was probably feeling like his typical untouchable bad boy self after winning his defamation lawsuit against that bloke from the UK who he called a pedophile. Because he didn't just ignore a sign telling him that he could only turn right out of the parking lot he was driving out of. He completely ran it over in front of the paparazzi. What a boss. Yeah, I doubt he did it on purpose, but it's just the epitome of Elon F your rules Musk. But anyway, Go Discovery is far from the only boat we're gonna talk about today. SpaceX's West Coast drone ship, Just Read the Instructions, arrived in Florida after making its way from California to Louisiana for maintenance over the past six months. It will support Of Course I Still Love You with the busy future schedule of Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Starship Super Heavy landings. The ship was seen carrying additional supplies that could possibly be used to upgrade the ships so that they can leave and enter the port under their own power and so will no longer rely on tugboats, saving costs, but that's educated guesswork by the community. Still, on the topic of boats, the booster used for the most recent mission, CRS-19, made it to port on Of Course I Still Love You this week, where it was lifted by crane and the legs were retracted this time for faster recovery. By the way, check out this epic landing pick captured by SpaceX. I honestly think it would be worth months of starvation to strand oneself on an inflatable life raft in proximity to this thing just to have a great view of the event. But maybe that's just me, because as Carrie always says, I'm a big old weirdo. I guess I should also mention that the Dragon capsule for this mission successfully docked with the space station on Sunday. It could very well be the second to last cargo Dragon of this version to go to space. After March, once CRS-20 has launched, SpaceX is supposed to switch over to version 2, which is similar to the Crew Dragon capsule and will no longer berth to the station, but autonomously dock. Sprecken of Crew Dragon, Gwen Shotwell literally cleared up some confusing information about important launch dates right after I released my previous video, Story of My Life. She clarified that SpaceX will not wait until February to do the in-flight abort test, but that's when we can expect Demo 2, the first commercial launch of American astronauts, to happen. And that the in-flight abort is currently scheduled for January 4th, so yay! We could see the capsule and booster roll out to the pad in a couple weeks here. But before any of that happens, we have other launches to enjoy. SpaceX opened up media accreditation for Starlink 3's launch in January, but Starlink 2 is still scheduled for late December. And to help combat light pollution, one of those satellites will be painted with a special coating to make the spacecraft less reflective, and therefore less of a nuisance to astronomers trying to take pictures of the stars. Shotwell cautioned that this is just an experiment, and that they'll do trial and error to figure out the best way to get it done correctly. But even before Starlink 2, we have the JCSAT mission to look forward to next week. The rocket went vertical today at LC-40 and completed a successful static fire in preparation for Monday's launch. If it's your cup of tea, you may go ahead and tune into this channel to share the experience intimately with Unky Kev Kev. I'll also quickly add that Kepler Communications announced that they are teaming up with SpaceX for a launch in 2020. They are utilizing SpaceX's new SmallSat rideshare program to place their own small constellation into low Earth orbit, which will ultimately comprise of 140 sats over the course of three launches. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket launched its 12 suborbital launch this week. 
<laughs> said to be one of the few remaining uncrewed launches before the company begins putting private passengers in the capsule. For this mission, it took a series of school letters and science experiments into space for a brief moment in time, which included one experiment used to test the idea of turning poop into fuel. You know, I'll be the first to admit that it was kind of hurtful to realize that I was beaten to space by a shark. But oh well, that's all I have for you guys today. My thanks goes out to all my eccentric YouTube members and patrons who continuously support this channel. If you think you can handle all of this, go ahead and check the link in the description below. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Godspeed.